Hello my friend, how are you doing? And welcome to another video of the marketing research series. And this time I'm going to talk about the marketing skills handbook, what it is and how you can use it for your marketing research project. Um, so just really quickly, uh, the marketing skills handbook essentially is a compilation of a number of skills that have been developed throughout decades and decades and decades for researchers across the world. They will allow you to measure almost any factor in marketing. A factor is something like quality, attitude, satisfaction, uh, risk, arousal, um, and many others, okay? And each of these factors, let's say satisfaction or attitude, they're, me they're measured by a number of items together. And I'll show you um, how you can find them and how you can apply that into your questionnaire. What you can see here on the screen is the, the Marketing Skills Handbook from Gordon and Bruner. He's uh, one of the main authors, at least that I use. Um, this is here's volume six, but he has also other volumes. And in the different volumes, you will find different scales, okay? If you don't have, uh, if you can't find the Marketing Skills Handbook in the library of your university, make sure to contact them and ask them to request for it because they're really valuable. And please don't write to me because I don't have digital versions of them. The one that you can see on the screen is made available by my university, okay? All right, so let me show you really quickly how this is, um, how you can use it for your research project. So I just randomly here chose a few factors to show you how they work. So um, what what should you look for? Here on top, it's got scale name. Scale name is it's gonna tell me which factor they're measuring. So the factor here is ad trust. So the trust that you have in the ad and ad trust affect. So it's probably the trust that you have in the ad related with also feelings and emotions. If I wanna know more, you should have a look into the scale description. So the scale description will say, this scale uses uh, three unipolar terms with a seven-point Likert-type response format to measure the degree to which a person feels that, in general, the advertising in a specific country is pleasing and entertaining. So if you want to live in any particular country and you want to measure, for example, how people think that the ads on that country are pleasing and entertaining, you should use this particular scale. On scale origin, it will tell you when it was developed, by whom it was developed, the reliability is really important because the scales with low reliability, you shouldn't be interested in using them. The ones that in previous studies um, achieved good reliability scores, there's a great likelihood it's also going to have in yours. So, and this one here, it's saying that the final version of the scale was reported to have an alpha, a Kronbach alpha of 0.83, which is a satisfactory uh, result. By the way, if you don't know what a Kronbach alpha is and how to calculate it, um, don't forget in the uh, YouTube channel of uh, here in the YouTube channel of Live Innovation, there's a playlist of SPSS tutorials, and there's a tutorial there on Kronbach Alpha, and then I'll show you how you can calculate and interpret that. Okay, all right. Then you've got here the validity, the reference. So if you want to reference the scale, and here are the scale items. The scale items are really important because these items are the ones that you transfer directly to your questionnaire. And this scale here is a three item scale. You won't find scales with any less than three items. That's the bare minimum, okay, that, that you're gonna find. And, um, and each item here um, should be measured individually and all three together, they're gonna measure the factor. So it's um, what it has here, it's basically to rank how you feel about the ads that they are likable, enjoyable, or positive. Now, you shouldn't choose any of these items to put in your questionnaire. You should include all three afterwards because remember, all three together, they're gonna measure the factor, which is add trust. Um, afterwards, when you run your, your reliability test, if one of these items are, are not, um, are compromising the reliability, you might delete them. You can find that on the Kronbach Alpha test, but you should include all three in your questionnaire, okay? How would these three look in your questionnaire? I've already set up here to show you. It would look like a question more or less like this. In a matrix format in which you have the information conveyed in national advertising is likable, enjoyable, positive, and each one being measured on a scale for fully disagree all the way to fully agree. Now, something really important. On the scale description here, the author said a seven point Laker type scale. And I'm using here a five point Laker scale. Can you do these minor adjustments? Yes, you can, but make sure that when you're writing the methodology section, you say adapted from, and then include the original author, 
because what you say is, I used the scale from such and such, but I didn't use exactly 100% like he or she did. I did minor adaptations. So if someone is reading your work and they want to replicate that scale, they know that they're not using the exact original one as it was originally used, but you made some minor adaptations, okay? So these three items here that together measure add for trust in your study, they would look more or less like this. A matrix format, each line of the matrix would be one item of your scale, and then you would have the anchors on top. In this case here, it would be fully disagree to fully agree, but it would change depending on what the factor is. How do I know that it's fully disagree to fully agree? Well, the author has given me here in the bottom a brief description of what the anchors are. Sometimes they'll give, sometimes they won't give, okay? So this is one type of scale. And now I wanna show you a second example with a second type of scale. Now it's a scale of arousal positive. So if I wanna measure how people are aroused. Uh, the scale description says, the scale is composed of three seven-point Likert statements that measure the degree to which a person feels he or she is experiencing pleasurable stimulation in his or her life. Now, that's a pretty interesting one that you can use in many areas of your life. I'll leave your imagination to think about it. And instead of giving me only words, what it's giving me here, the items are full-on sentences. And you can see here in the bottom, there's no description. So the author is not telling me here in the bottom the description of how it should uh, be measured. But it's giving me here statements. I feel I'm experiencing new sensations and activities. I feel intense physical pleasure and enjoyment. And I feel I have, I have found new sources and types of simulation for myself. So these three items together, they're gonna measure arousal and positive, okay? How would that look in your questionnaire? It would look something more or less like this where you have, please evaluate the extent to which you agree with the following statements regarding pleasure stimulation in your life. Then you would have the three items here exactly as they are on the marketing uh, scales handbook. And then on top, ranging from fully disagree to fully agree, okay? So one type of scale was when you had only one word. Uh, second type of, of, uh, of items is when you have full on sentences that you put on the matrix. And I wanna show you a third type um, that also exists, okay? Um, so let me look for it here. All right, now here is a scale of fun. The factor is just fun, okay? Now the scale is composed of seven point semantic differential items, so it's got seven items, uh, measuring a person's belief concerning uh, the perceived enjoyment that would be experienced with regard to specific stimulus. As described below, the stimuli compared to by Deb Holker um, were two methods of ordering uh, at a fast food restaurant, touch screen versus verbally placing the order with an employee. Now that's an interesting one because so the original work, they used it to contrast how much fun the employees were having, comparing when they were using touch screens on a fast food restaurant compared to um, talking to, with the actual employee, okay? It's got the scale origin, reliability, we already know that, so on and so on. And here I have the scale items. Now, the scale items now here are four items actually, and it's not giving me one single word as was the first example. It's not giving me a sentence like it was on the second example, but this time it's giving me anchors. So what it's saying is you should measure fun, for example, on the first item ranging from will not be interesting all the way to will be interesting. And you can do this in a five point scale and a seven point scale and a nine point scale. Excuse me. Um, the second item ranging from will not be entertaining all the way to will be entertaining. Uh, the third item will not be fun all the way to will be fun. The fourth item will not be enjoyable all the way to will be enjoyable. Now, what is the issue, which is perfectly fine using this type of, of anchors to measure the factor. The only problem is that if you're using one of those uh, online survey tools, very rarely they allow you to set up questions in which you define the anchors like that, okay? If they don't allow you to do this, one way in which you can get around and still use the items is, for example, you focus only on the positive items like will be interesting, will be entertaining, will be fun, will be enjoyable. And 
let me show you here as I made one to show it to you um, and then you can use only the positive anchors right will be interesting will be entertaining will be fun will be enjoyable and then you have here the items on top here just as an example I had um, um, a fictitious question in which people would project how they would feel in terms of fun while listening to the Beatles so listening to the songs from the Beatles will be entertaining will be interesting fun and enjoyable okay if the the online uh, survey uh, tool that you use allows you to create these anchors then you would go ahead and create these anchors okay all right so this is the third type of items when it gives you only the anchors the final observation that I want to show you here is sometimes you're gonna find scales this is a scale for impulse buying so how people buy impulsively um, and this is a nine this is a nine item scale as you can see here so nine items um, which by the way don't 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 be uh, uh, don't worry about it um, in psychology if you have scales for personality and and trauma that will have 40 items depending on the scale okay so it's per uh, it's perfectly okay to have a scale with nine items but what I want to highlight here is that this item num number eight I carefully plan most of my purchases and then it has an R here on the sides okay and this is important to pay attention because the logic is this R here is for reversed and why is it reversed the first item here says I often buy things spontaneously uh, number three uh, just do it describes the way I buy things uh, number three I often buy things without thinking so all of the items so far are all about impulsive buying the item number eight I carefully plan most of my purchases now carefully planning is not impulsive buying so it's the opposite of impulsive buying and that's why it has an R of reversed and why do you include reversed items there are different reasons for that but um, one of the main ones is that when people are answering so they're not just uh, not even thinking about it anymore and then you switch um, the balance of one of the items so you can grab again the, the attention of respondents you just gotta make sure that once you delete once once you uh, download the, the data yeah you analyze you either reverse uh, the scores of the items or you and you analyze it differently this particular item here because otherwise it's not gonna make sense um, if you have like a very low score on this one compared to the other ones because the items are reversed okay so on a nutshell this is what the marketing scales handbook is about a compilation of scales that allows you to measure a number of factors right so if you, you can see here on the right side of my um, screen here here I have a number of things that you can measure insurance product beliefs interdependence intoxication justice irritation so a lot of psychological constructs loyalty loyalty to employ uh, line motivation market uh, Marvinism mood mobile transactions it's a bunch of things here that you can measure okay again once you use these items and you put them in your questionnaire no one can question the validity of what you're doing because these are skills that were previously defined uh, developed tested and validated through their publication okay and yeah um, and also the, the the final things that I highlighted the different formats of items some will be words some will be full-on sentences some will give you anchors and some of them will have this R for reversed so make sure you be careful with that one and just the final comment remember it's not to pick and choose these items you include all of the items in your questionnaire because together these items measure the factor whichever the factor is that you're measuring okay and of course you can make minor adaptations to adapt to the context of your study um, if the original study is measured for example in a five or a seven point scale and you want to use a different um, a different anchoring uh, from one to five or one to seven or one to nine you can do that you if you change if you adapt small wording that doesn't really change the meaning of the item you also can do that but don't forget in your methodology to say adapted from and then you you cite the author so that the viewer can know that you're using a scale that was developed by such and such but it's not a hundred percent as it was original originally um created that you made minor uh adaptations all right and of course don't forget it there are different playlists on the live innovation youtube channel 
There's another one for thesis writing, in case you're writing your thesis, with a number of, of uh, videos there from developing your idea all the way to how you present your thesis. There's SPSS tutorials that start with introduction to the software all the way to, I think, MANOVA, factor analysis, and so on. And with time, I'll add uh, others, okay? So don't forget to check that. And to finish off my musical recommendation, this time I will recommend 10 Years Gone by Led Zeppelin, one of the best bands of all time. Jimmy Page, one of the best guitar players of all time. Listen, listen to 10 Years Gone by uh, Led Zeppelin, all right? All the absolute best. Take care and bye-bye.